Let's go. We are jumping into a match. We are playing against Cedric Phillips. Uh, so this might be on stream. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what he's playing. But if you've watched the intro to this video, you know what he's playing. Jumping into it, I'm going to break it down for you. Let's do it. We are on the play. Hmm. He is playing a Lurus deck. I'm going to put him on hammer time just because it feels like that's a deck that fits his play style. I don't know for sure. Um, this hand doesn't really do anything. Pete Land draws me a card. Just digs me deeper into my deck. I mean, it's, it functions, but it's just not great. What would you guys do here? I think most people would probably ship it. I'm a little hesitant to do so. I think we'll try it. And I feel like we got two draw steps and the peat land to figure out something in the interim. So the hope is we pull into a Yawgmoth or a Cord or an Evo, then we can go from there. So I'll keep it. I really don't like mulliganing. I'll do it if I have to, but I don't like it. All right, and turn one. I think our mana is good enough where we can just fetch basics here. Avoid taking excess damage. He's playing a Lurus deck, so regardless of which iteration he's, he's playing, chances are he can deal us damage and deal us damage quickly. Mesa. Okay, so he's playing Hammer Time, which was what I suspected. All right, so here, I'm gonna build out our mana base a little bit more. And I think during his turn, I'm actually gonna draw a card with Peatland as opposed to playing out one of the birds. With the hope of, once again, pulling something, some piece of action that I can utilize. And then next turn, I can play that and deal with whatever threat he's gonna play. So in the chat today, in our Discord group, one of the big topics of discussion was whether or not um, Wall of Roots is better than Prosperous Innkeeper. And this would be an in instance where Prosperous Innkeeper uh, would not be as good as Wall of Roots from a um, uh, a mana sense. Well, I guess typically it's not going to be as good from that perspective. Um, but I don't know. I'm I'm not convinced when it comes to that card that it's as good or better than Wall of Roots is because Wall of Roots has so much utility in this deck. It's so versatile. Um, all right, so he's got a hammer. As long as he doesn't have trample on it, we're okay. So I think we can deal with that. All right, Tomb is not a great draw. Yawgmoth is a good draw. All right, so this we can do something with. All right, so the question is, do we shock and play out the Yawgmoth? Or do we fetch? I think we shock here. So in spite of this hand not looking great from the get-go, it actually panned out pretty well. Very relevant here is that Yawgmoth has protection from humans, so unless he has a way to trample over his pure steel, pure steel paladin, it's not going to be dealing as much damage here as of yet. And then we have a way to interact with whatever creatures he puts out from this point forward. So. Our hope is that we pull into a Grist or the combo and kill him from here um, before he can pop off this Saga and get a Shadow Spear. So that's the card, the most relevant card that we're putting on our radar right now. We 
We already have a video with this matchup, but it's such a prominent deck within the format that I think it's good to see it from a couple of different angles, see it a couple times over. Just the light here. And just from a, a matchup perspective, I think Yawgmoth is pretty favored in this matchup. Statistically, you're looking at least, let me look at my stat sheet here, which is linked in the bio, linked in the description here. So it has it as 63% matchup right now, which I'd, I'd say is fairly accurate. So he's building out his board presence a little bit more. He has the ability to make a token. Um, and I'm going to make him commit to that now. If he has six, he's in trouble. Yeah, I guess he can do it there. That's fine. So the construct's fairly large. Another fetch land, which gives us another shot off of our um, off of our yog I think I'm gonna add add green here and start with this. Okay, so that's pretty good. Question is, do I just grist and kill the paladin, or do I go for something else here? He's got two cards in hand, and we did not use our wall of roots yet. Two, three, one, two. I think we're gonna draw a card first. Okay, Geist is pretty good. So I think we're foregoing the Paladin plan here. Okay, we got the kill. Um, play this out. Hopefully he just scoops and saves us the time. So there is a consideration to play out the Grist, um, but given our life total and the amount of mana we had available, I think the right move was to, to try to go for the combo there. We had 10-ish draws to find it, so I think it was worth the risk. Um, in this matchup, we're bringing in our artifact package, uh, which is these five cards. Also of note, we have two Viseju in the main deck now, which will have some utility in this matchup. I'm gonna pull up my sideboard guide and look at my outs. Hammer time matchup, two wall, one geist, one endurance, one cord are what we're pulling. Typically I'll pull wool. Pull wool. I'll pull walls in matchups where my one drops aren't being threatened. Um, just because you don't need all 12 mana creatures in the deck. And if you know that your one drops are gonna survive, you have the ability to start shaving some of those two drops. I will pull one geist, one endurance, and one cord. And I think our matchup, this actually gets better for us post board as it does for, uh, as opposed to how it gets for them, just because Force of Vigor is a house, Crime Punishment is a house, the cards are just really, really good. And this hand looks strong against them. It's lacking ramp, but it has two of our sideboard cards, so we're going to keep it, and it has Yawgmoth as well, which is also a really good card. He mulligan down to six. So I was talking with somebody earlier today about this deck and about its matchups. 
and I don't, I really don't think it has any terrible matchups. It has some, some tough matchups, but nothing terrible. Nothing where you're a dog like 30, 70 or anything like that. Um, at worst, I think it's like 40, 60 in some of its bad matchups, like Belcher. But I think you're hard pressed to find a matchup where this deck really, really doesn't have a shot. So the question here is, do we get basic or do we get tomb? Our life total is definitely something we want to preserve in this matchup, but I don't know that I want to forego double black without having any mana fixing. So I think we're going to get tomb here, unfortunately. might be a little slow we'll see how it pans out we're probably pitching the cord to the force of vigor if we need to use it giver of runes is very relevant uh, i can protect one of his creatures so sigardas is relevant pithing needle is relevant and i think here we might actually pop the force of vigor Um, only because if he's, so if he's using the giver on a, uh, to protect something, it would likely be the ink moth and we're not going to be able to force a bigger that, um, if he does so. So I'm going to get rid of these guys now. It's a nice two for two. I like being patient with force of vigors in this matchup, but I think that was the right move. From here, so we can play, I think playing Bird out is the right move because if we don't draw land, we will have Liberator up next turn. If we draw land, we'll have Yawgmoth, which is just really strong. So let's see what he's got here. Of note, he's got a Lurus that he can bring into his hand. Cat sitting on the sidelines, and he does that for good reason. All right, we did not pull our fourth land, but Wall of Roots is actually decent. Gives us access to both. Ramp for next turn, gives us the Liberator this turn, and we can also activate the Liberator on their turn. So I think that was actually a pretty good draw in spite of the fact that it doesn't afford us the ability to cast Yawgmoth this turn. All right, so if his turn is spent casting Lurus, I think we're in pretty good shape. the needle. Let's see what he names here. So if he names Yawgmoth, we're going to Liberator it. If he names Liberator, that's fine. We're going to cast a Yawgmoth on our next turn. So he's, not, he's kind of in trouble either way, regardless of what he names. And for us, one of our best draws here is actually Twilight Mirror. Uh, because it will afford us the ability to proliferate on his turn, which will be very relevant. So we'll see what happens here. Okay, names you all. If you guys hear a noise in the background, my dog is sleeping behind me, so that's what you're hearing. is coming down and we're going to start eating some creatures here.
that. Force of Vigor is actually a really good draw. Um, so I guess the question is, do we play out Dried Arbor now? And then we can kill the Lurus. This is close. Dried Arbor draws us two cards. If we draw into another green card, then we'll have Force of Vigor up as well. I think that's worth it. We got our green card, okay. Oh, he's got Pro Black, I forgot about that. Okay, we'll just nab him during the upkeep, which is fine. He only has one card in hand here, so I'm mean, really not at risk for dying. Um, I think he's pretty, pretty out of gas. Granted the fact that we also have Force of Vigor in our hand, we have a lot of protection in this situation. And he scooped. So an easy 2-0 against a very good matchup. You stick a Yawgmoth, you have sideboard cards. You're going to be heavily advantaged, as you just saw. Second time we've played against this matchup in our uh, matchup critiques. And as you can see, we're 2-0 up to this point. And this is uh, keeping track at this point because we're on a win streak. We're running hot. This is our 12th win in a row uh, with this deck, with this, this iteration of this deck. So deck is super powerful. If you're not on it, get with it. I'll see you next time.